Mm. So I'm working in the Univalent Foundations group uh, of Vladimir Vodsky here at the Institute. And I want to, in my talk, I want to give you an idea what type theory is all about and what uh, Univ Univalent Foundations is. And also show you an example of an open problem that I've been working a bit on. So like I said, I'm working kind of on computer formalization of mathematics, which means that we implement proofs in a proof assistant which is a bit like writing the proof in LaTeX, but the system also checks that the proof is correct for you and uh, tells you if, if you miss to describe some case, it will tell you you have to explain this case to me and you interact with the system. And there are many different examples of proof assistance and we are working mostly with a proof assistant called Coq, okay? So before I start talking, oh, I see the top is gone, but anyway. Uh, Off by a few centimeters. This is a good proof assistant. Yeah, <laughs> computers <laughs> are always. Uh, kind of the blackboard in all respects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to emphasize two different kind of fields in the kind of in computer proving or theorem proving on computers. So one of them is automated theorem proving. And that's when the user provides statements and the computer tries to find a proof. And that's usually not decidable. So what I mean is you can write the program that starts with a set of axiom and a set of uh, inference rules and apply this kind of, you kind of enumerate all the theorems of the theory. And if the statement that you're asking about is a theorem, the program will terminate, maybe after a million years, but it will terminate eventually. But if the the statement is not a theorem, the program will not terminate. So this problem is semi-decidable, okay? And the other kind of thing that we are doing is interactive theorem proving. So we provide the statement and the proof and the program just checks if our proof is correct. So these two, I just want to clarify this because many people seem to be confused about the difference in the computer finding the proof and the computer just checking the proof. And checking the proof is easier than actually finding the proof as you. No. OK. But it's the same for computers. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. But uh, from a decidability perspective. I have 17 proofs for the Riemann hypothesis on my desk. Oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> well. <laughs> so then I also want to show some, so here are some, I just want to show some examples where this kind of formalization of mathematics on a computer has kind of been uh, uh, some major impressive project. So the first one was the four color theorem. So it talks about coloring of maps. So you have a map and the theorem says that for any kind of configuration of the map, you can color it with only four colors so that no two adjacent regions have the same color. And the original proof was proved by uh, Haken and Appel in the 70s. And they kind of, the, the idea is you reduce it to a finite number of cases, maybe a very large finite number of maps, and then you check it with a computer that all of these cases are four colorable, colorable with four colors. So this was kind of controversial when it came out because the proof was using computers. But then in 2005, uh, George Contier and the team that he led uh, formalized this thing in Coq, which is the system we're using here as well. Mm, yeah, they probably yeah, used. The yeah, they probably used the simplification. I don't know if they formalized exactly the same computer programs. Probably not. But yeah. And then a few years ago, there was also a formal proof of the Fight Thompson theorem, so the odd order theorem, uh, also by a team led by George Contier in Coq. So this talks. So this is actually the final statement of the theorem in the Coq proof assistant, uh, and Coq checks that this is correct. So for any finite group. If the order is odd, then it's solvable. So this proof, when it came out in the 60s, I think was quite controversial because it was very long. It was like 250 pages and occupied a full issue of a journal, I think. So, but now they have actually checked the whole proof in Coq. So that's quite done. And this proof also builds, of course, on lots of like more mathematics than just uh, group theory. You need Galois theory and representation theory and so on. So they had to develop a lot of mathematics in Cox to be able to prove this. And last year, a team led by Thomas Hales uh, 
announced that they had formalized this proof of the Kepler conjecture, which is also an example of, so this, this talks about the optimal way of packing spheres, which is kind of this way, they figure out, <laughs> the one you would expect if you stack oranges. So yeah, uh, and this proof was also a bit controversial for the same reason as the four color theorem, because he submitted the proof in 98, I think, and it was like a 200 page paper proof and then three gigabytes of computer programs and data. And then uh, the reviewers tried to review this for multiple years and said that they were 99% sure that the proof was actually correct. So then he spent like 10 years formalizing this and now this last percent of that is hopefully gone. So, and what was I want to say? Yes, so all of these systems, so Koch and Isabel Hall are actually based not on set theory, but on something called type theory. So now I will talk about that. So type theory is a class of formal systems which can be seen as an alternative to set theory for the foundations of mathematics. And it all started kind of in 1908 when Bertrand Russell wrote a paper called Mathemat Log Mathematical Logic as based on the theory of types, where he kind of wants to construct a formal system that overcomes these problems that naive set theory has with the set of all sets not containing themselves and so on. So he wants to avoid these paradoxes and then he constructs some theory of types. And it's also quite fun to see that in 1908, Zermelo also published his first paper on what is now zermelo frankel set theory. So there was lots of stuff going on in the foundations of mathematics in 1908. And then some 30 years later, Alonso Church, who was a student, PhD student here in, uh, so he did his PhD under Veblen here in Princeton, uh, wrote the formulation of the simple theory of types, which is the system that is, uh, the, the whole system that, uh, Thomas Hales verified his proof. It's kind of based on this system. And nowadays, kind of many, many of the modern systems, for example, Koch that we are using here, is based on work by the Swedish mathematician Per Martin Löv from the 70s, which I will try to explain now. So these Martin Löv type theories, uh, you have four different kinds of basic judgments. So you can say that A is a type, or that little a is an element of a type big A. And types also comes equipped with some notion of equality, so when two types are equal. And the elements of types also comes equipped with some notion of equality. And then you have function types, which are types of functions between types and product types and some types and so on. So I can just show some very simple examples. So for example, you would say that in type theory, we would say that the natural numbers is a type. And then the number two is, of course, an element of this type, which you write with a colon, not the element of system uh, symbol that you're all used to, but with a colon. So, And then you would say that the plus function is a function that takes two natural numbers and give you a natural number, and you also have pairs and so on. So the syntax is a bit different. And there are also, uh, I mean, different from set theory. And another difference is that each term only have one type. And uh, while in set theory, you many sets, I mean, the empty set is contained in infinitely many other sets, of course. But here, every element only has one type. So that's one difference. Another important difference is that proofs are so-called first-class citizens, which is like a programming language term that means that proofs are objects that you can talk about in the language. So for example, to construct the even natural numbers, you would make a type with the first a type of pairs where the first element is a number. And the second element is a proof that this number is even. So this is a kind of different idea from what you're used to from set theory. And, but it's quite nice because it gives a very nice interpretation of the logical connectives, which is usually called the brouwer heiting kolmogorov interpretation. And so for this instance, an implication, P implies Q, is sort of as a function that maps a proof of P into a proof of Q. And this way, one can kind of see that propositions form a sub-universe of all the types, and the logical connectives are encoded by these general operations that you can do on types. So that's a very different, kind of a different flavor from set theory, I would say. And another Is thing, yes. Mm, yes and no, you can kind of postulate, you can add axioms to type theory which are not like the law of excluded middle. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you don't add any axioms, it will be a constructive intuitionistic system. Mm. But uh, yes, 
that's another important point. Thank you. So, yeah, and there's also a connection to programming languages and programming because uh, the syntax that this kind of type theory uses are the so-called lambda calculus, which also comes from Alonso Church. And uh, there are many like functional programming languages that also builds on this kind of idea, like Lisp or Scheme. I also saw that MATLAB also have a notion of lambda anonymous functions and so on. So many programming languages uses similar ideas and constructs. And I think this is one of the reasons why many of these proof assistants are based on type theory and not set theory. But just my opinion. So now let's move on to what we're working on here. So we're working on this univalent foundations project, which aims at providing a practical foundations of mathematics built on top of this kind of Martin Love type theory. And it was started by Vladimir Wawoski around 2006, 2009. And the institute actually had a special year devoted to it in 2012, 2013. And we here at the institute are working on developing this kind of univalent ideas in Coq in a library that we call the Unimath library. Okay. So what is univalent foundation? So it extends Martin Lev type theory with an axiom, the univalence axiom, which can be stated as an equivalence of types leads to an equivalence of all constructions on those types. And uh, one consequence you get from this is that you can transport structures along equivalences. And that actually, Bourbagia talks about this kind of thing in the theory of sets as well. So they have a clear definition of what a structure is. And then they show that you can somehow transport along isomorphism between different structures. And this, the univalence axiom somehow captures this idea very nicely in type theory. So it's strange it should be an axiom, because in Bourbaki, you prove that if you respect some rules, then it's automatically true. You could want to hope that it can be a theorem. Yeah, I'll get to exactly that. That's kind of the open problem uh, that I will hint on in the end. So. so just to give, for those of you who haven't seen this before, an idea, a very simple intuitive idea, what this means. So the complex numbers can be represented using Cartesian or polar coordinates. And these are, of course, equivalent. And if we prove that the Cartesian representation is a field, we somehow automatically should get a field structure on the polar representation. And this kind of seems trivial, but Remember that we're working on a computer, so we need to explain how this works for the computer so that the computer can do this for us, which is not so trivial, actually. And yeah, exactly what I said before, that this is a, somehow a general formulation of this principle. Anyways. So now I kind of get to the problem that you were talking about. So uh, one problem, uh, if you add an axiom to much level type theory like this, uh, law of excluded middle and so on. The system, there are things that you cannot compute. So we want to find an algorithm for transporting these structures somehow inside type theory, which is somehow to give a computational interpretation of this univalence axiom so it becomes computable, whatever that means. So, And this is not so easy because you have to do it not only for equivalence of types, but for equivalence of general mathematical structures, like the isomorphisms of groups, or even equivalence of categories, and so on for higher categories and whatnot. So <coughs> yes, so one approach to this, to, to tackling this problem, is to look at models of type theory. And by a model, I mean a category with some extra structure. So you start with this type theory, and you interpret it into a category with extra structure. So Vladimir has a theorem that says that Martin Love type theory with this axiom has a model in Kant's simplicial sets. So there you have a category with extra structure and you interpret everything from Martin Love type theory into this model. However, uh, this model uses classical logic in essential ways, which means that you cannot use this model construction to extract an algorithm. Uh, to see how things compute. And this was proved by Mark Bessam and Thierry Kukon during the special year, I think, if I remember correctly. And so somehow the idea is to find a constructive model and then extract an algorithm for to tackle this open problem. So Mark Bessam, Thierry Kukon, and Simon Huber recently presented such a constructive model in cubicle sets in 2014. We had a paper on this. And I have been working with uh, Thierry Kukon, Cyril Cohen, and Simon Huber to simplify this model. So I have a question mark because it's, yeah, some people might argue that it's not simpler the way we're doing it, but 
we're working with cubicle sets with connections instead of cubicle sets, and it uh, sim simplifies some constructions. And we have used this to construct a new type theory with a computational interpretation of univalence. And in particular, we get an algorithm for transporting structures along equivalences in type theory. And we even have an implementation of a very simple proof assistant built on this uh, kind of type theory. So you can actually define your favorite structure and then transport along, and things will actually compute, which is fun. OK, thank you.